Hello to everyone. We are waiting for several seconds and we will start. Please type your name and country. We're interested where you're from. There are supporters from Croatia, Russia. Austria. It's, it's the Suzanne. Scotland. That's Diane. Our moderator, Indonesia. New York, the United States, Zimbabwe. Turkey. Okay, I think uh, we can start uh, our today's session. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Welcome to our talk about volunteering activity in the LIS field. Today we run the sixth webinar in a webinar series for library and information science students brought to you by the professional units of the Division C. My name is Albina Krymska. I'm Associate Professor of St. Petersburg State University in Russia, and I'm the Chair of the Section on Education and Training on, of IFLA. I'd like to thank my colleagues who are here today and who will uh, moderate this webinar, uh, Diane Pennington and Nicole Philburn. As before, our project team is much, much bigger. And I thank all who helped with organizing this webinar. Thank you, IFLA Professional Support uh, Unit for supporting this webinar and for their help. Today's webinar is dedicated to the International Volunteer Day that we will celebrate on December 5th, uh, this uh, Sunday. The theme of this year is Volunteer Now for Our Common Future. Thank you all who join us today, and we hope that this session will bring and build more volunteers into LIS field. I'm sure our speakers will motivate you to do that. They will motivate you to volunteer in libraries. And now I turn it over to my co-moderator, Diane. Thank you. Uh, microphone. Hello, everyone. So uh, again, yes, thank you for, for coming today. Um, I think this is a very, very important topic and, and volunteering in libraries can, can mean so many things uh, for those of us who are, are in the profession or want to be in the profession. And there, there's just so much to learn from to do it. I, I think my first volunteering job in a library was when I was 11 years old and I I don't even remember what I did in the library, but I know that was my favorite place in the school. And I actually liked it better than some of the times when I was supposed to be talking with the other kids. I just wanted to be in the library. And, you know, years later, that hasn't changed. <laughs> so I'm really happy to be here uh, moderating the session today. Uh, so uh, just a few notes on privacy. Uh, we're going to record the session so that people can see it later. And the, if that's okay with everyone, we'll have the chat as well as the video recorded. And we'll post the video later on our YouTube channel for people who couldn't watch it. And it will also be available on Facebook and Instagram. And microphones will be muted unless the person is speaking. And if you would please, uh, if you have a question for the panelists, please put your question in the Q&A box. So there's a separate uh, button on Zoom for Q&A compared to uh, the chat. So it's great to have all, all kinds of good conversation in the chat, but if you put the actual questions for the panelists in the Q&A, 
will make it easier for us to find them later on. And uh, from there we've got, this is what our program today. Uh, first, we will have a keynote with, with Magdalena about volunteering in the life of a librarian. And after the keynote, uh, Magdalena, Suzanne, Andres, and Maria are all part of the panel, so said that correctly. And the first session, then we'll have two separate sessions after that, and then we'll have some time for discussion and Q&A. So with that, I would like to go ahead and get started with our keynotes, uh, and we'll hear from four different people from four different countries about what it's like to volunteer as a librarian. So thanks very much. Do you have your own slides that you'll be showing or? Uh, yes, uh, yes, we will have. Okay. Uh, but before, uh, thank you, Diane, for having introduced us and uh, Albina for inviting uh, us as a keynote speaker. We are so delighted to be here with you and have a possibility to talk and present our and share our experience. Uh, I look at number of our participants. We are so many people here that it's really get great that so many of you um, were able to join us today. That's Friday, so I understand that <laughs> and I really appreciate your time. Uh, today with me, there are my colleagues from New Professional Special Interest Group, Maria Simonovic from Croatia, uh, Suzanne Listretan from Austria, Andres Reynoso from Argentina. So uh, let me talk more about our presentation. It's an usual presentation. We prepared a kind of uh, whiteboard animation. Uh, we uh, and add to this uh, Maria, Andres, Suzanne, and I. Uh, we will be a lecturer, a kind of a storyteller, who uh, explain and uh, tell you a story and explain a role of volunteering in our life. So I would like to ask Maria to share her skin, her screen. And we can start. Okay, so hello again. My name is Magdalena and I come from Poland. I am a convenor of IFLA, New Professional Special Interest Group, uh, a place where we welcome new prof professionals to the new field. I am here with my colleagues, with Maria, from Croatia, with Suzanne from Austria, with Andres from Argentina. And yes, that's the real me. Together, we would like to present our topic, volunteering in librarian's life. Many of you may wonder why we become uh, volunteers in library associations we already have our work in libraries and families with big, beautiful houses and very charming friends, as well as other interests and hobbies. So what was the reason for engaging in a free job? There is a very important question today. At the beginning, let's check how many volunteers we have in different countries. IFLA has a very interesting project, which is prepared in partnership with library associations and national libraries. It is a library map of the world. It is a source of basic library statistics. You can find data uh, about, uh, many, about many uh, areas. From the collected data, we see that there is 907,237 uh, volunteers. For, for more information, you, you, you can check the website librarymap.ifla.org. So now there is a time that we are going to Argentina. And All right. Hello, Andres. Your microphone is yours. Let me. You can hear me? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Oh, 
Hello, my name is Andres, and I want to tell you some uh, strategies about promote volunteering and participation that our national association, AVGRA, has recently used it. You can yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, this is my presentation. All right. In my country, Argentina, social volunteering and cooperative actions were always present in our lives. Volunteering often appears in a difficult situation in society as a, a strategy to create more a participatory and inclusive process. Since 2004, we had a legislation about social volunteering. This legislation protects and informs the volunteer about their rights, such as to be informed, to receive training, to receive an ID, and obligations such as accept aims and objectives of the organization, be respectful and participate in trainings. And well, what about us as information professionals? You know, libraries are ideal institutions to develop socialism. So the question is how to encourage young people and new professionals to make part of the professional association. This year, the annual meeting of ABRA, our national association, was held. And there was a special space for our new professionals. Why? Because after a long time, the first meeting of library science students took place. For more than two hours, new professionals from all over the country had the opportunity to share their topic of interest, comment or on the progress of their research, and relate their first professional experience. Topic of interest were exposed such as uh, libraries, uh, inclusive libraries, ecology, open access, uh, ethics in the handling of information, etc. Here I show some numbers and the importance of this event. Many of the participants are today collaborating in one of, of the commission of Avgra as a volunteer, and we hope that we continue to join. I believe that two key elements can be used to encourage volunteering. First, knowing how to listen and knowing how to communicate. Volunteering is not only a great tool for dialogue and to find and build collective response, but it's also a tool for connection and growth. But well, we don't know how far we take that. So go volunteers, thank you. So let me continue with the presentation. Uh, I'm Maria Shimura, which I'm a member of New Professional Special Interest Group, and I will be talking about uh, my experience in Croatia. So more about my country. I live and work in Croatia. Croatia uh, is a member of the uh, European Union, and uh, it has less than 4 million inhabitants and 1,921 uh, libraries. Uh, law in Croatia says that uh, librarians have to work in the library, so we have a big uh, librarian community and lots of uh, associations, such as regional associations, national and specialized ones. I will talk more about my experience, and my experience as volunteer started in 2013, where I became a member of Croatian Information and Documentation Society, and where I met first cool librarians. Since 2014, I, I'm a member of Regional Library Association, Zagreb Library Association, and uh, Croatian Library Association. Uh, by volunteering, I had the chance to gain new skills, such as write meeting minutes, manage social networks, organizational skills, editorial skills, and uh, international communication and cooperation skills. Uh, since 2000. Uh, 17, uh, I started, I became a volunteer for IFLA Blick 2017 in Poland, where I became a member of new professionals and I had a chance to learn and use new uh, applications and meet, of course, new international colleagues. As a volunteer, I feel like a rich girl because I did gain uh, numerous skills and I met uh, some cool people. Some of them are here right now. And uh, uh, so I feel like a rich person. Uh, but how does it all start? 
uh, for me, it was I was working in the library and I had a, a enclosed uh, environment and I had a, a chance to push some door and to find solution. How can, how can I learn new skills? So uh, volunteering is providing that for me uh, so you can get gain better language skill, communication skills, new tech skills like different gadgets and tools organizational skills and of course gather new networking opportunities updates in the in the list field ideas in list fields and of course colleagues and good friends uh, our advice is uh, you can start by joining nearest library association you can become a member you can participate in different events and you can promote international cooperation within library association especially with new professionals so we are waiting for you. Come and join us. Hi, so now it's my turn. Um, dear colleagues, my name is Susanne Listretan, and uh, I'm a volunteer for the New Professional Special Interest Group, as well as a standing committee member of the SET section. And um, today I would like to talk about the program that I have set up for volunteer librarians as part of my work for the Austrian Library Association. Austria is a country in Central Europe and we have around 9 million inhabitants. And volunteering has a long history in Austria. About 80% of the public libraries in Austria work with volunteers. We have around 1,300 public libraries and over 9,000 volunteers working there. So our idea in the library association was um, to give volunteer librarians the opportunity to gain practical library experience in a mobile library abroad. And this was achieved through a cooperation with the High Life Highland Libraries in Scotland in Great Britain. Scholarships have been offered in 2017 and 2018 for two colleagues each year. And the costs of the program have been covered by the Library Association. We were also able to invite our colleagues from Scotland to our 2018 conference in Graz in Austria, where we um, jointly presented the program at a panel discussion. So our cooperation partners have been the charity High Life Highland, and in total there are 70 High Life Highland libraries. Some are located in very sparsely um, populated areas, whereas other libraries are in, um, in towns. High Life Highland libraries, they operate eight so-called um, mobile libraries in the Scottish Highlands. And our volunteers' um, journeys were made with the Far North Mobile, which takes three weeks to cover its entire distance. It is a very spectacular route and it plays an important role in the life of the people, um, of the local people. Our librarians have reported that it was a wonderful experience that they wouldn't want to miss. And um, they learned a lot and there have been friendships formed that still exist. The reports of our volunteers can be read on a blog at blog.bvoe.at. The program has since been replaced by an Erasmus Plus funded program with cooperations with libraries all over Europe. And now I would like to show you some impressions of the trip and the program in the following film.
Uh, yes, that's uh, me again. Uh, I wanted to say that volunteering highlights our character and uh, our character and uh, our uh, passion uh, to life and to work and also our determination. Uh, at this point, a cooperation with IFLA New Professionals Special Interest Group helps, helps me gain confidence by giving me the chance to try something new and to build a, a new sense of librarianship. Uh, so do you want to know how it all began? Well, my story started in 2017 when Poland was a host of IFLA Congress and PSAG members needed a local librarian who would help them with organizing free events for librarians in Wrocław. Although I don't live in Wrocław, just only in Katowice, and I had many doubts, I agreed to cooperate with them and help them with all things there. I took part in organizing uh, IFLACAM, very famous unconference, and PSHG happy hours party with IFLA officers, and uh, a flash map on the main city square in Wrocław, where so many librarians were reading uh, books in their languages. It was such a good experience and time which I spent with interesting librarians. They are really cool people. And as a result, I decided to stay with them and be a volunteer in IFLA for next year. Uh, volunteering uh, helps me to try new things, uh, such as organizing webinars, writing emails and articles in English, uh, moderating online meetings, uh, planning conferences, talking, uh, communicating with my colleagues and a lot of libraries. Uh, so uh, new professionals, uh, it's a group of amazing people. You can see in this slide all our team and they faces. Uh, and what is the most important? Uh, I feel that I am part of the community because I have also chance to meet different kinds of people and make friends. So this experience is very important in my, uh, in my life. And if you would like to know more about our group, please find us on the Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. We have also our blog, and you can also write to us. Uh, okay, so thank you, Maria, for sharing our, uh, our presentation in unusual form, but it's not the end. We have something special for you. Uh, last minute, we were just only talking and showing. Now we can want to show you how our events looks like in our real life. So uh, I will ask Maria to share her screen and show uh, the movie. Uh, it's some kind of relation, uh, some kind uh, of video. Uh, from our last um, IFLA Congress in Athens uh, before the pandemic, uh, how our IFLA camp uh, looked, and also you can see all of our events. So enjoy the video.
également les aveugles nés, d'après les enseignements qu'on tient du révérend peuvent les accomplir tout aussi bien que les personnes douées de vie. Nous pouvons encore nous rendre compte ainsi de ce Thank you, Maria, for uh, sharing the film with us. Uh, I hope that all our participants uh, today uh, find out uh, how it looks in new professionals. Uh, volunteering is a very important uh, part of our life. Uh, sometimes this part is uh, very big and we spend a lot of time for uh, writing, for doing extra work. Uh, sometimes we learn new things and we uh, leave our comfort zone, but what is obvious that uh, we put ourselves uh, into what everything what we are doing. So I hope that my colleagues will agree with uh, this sentence. And if you have any questions uh, for our presentation or about our group, you can use uh, Q&A box. Uh, we will be happy to answer your questions and um, and also you can use a chat if you wish okay so thank you uh diane and uh we've just finished thanks that was a, a really really great presentation i really liked the video at the end it looks like you had, had a lot of fun too um that was the most shocking thing to me when I went to my very first library association meeting when I was a student was that librarians do like to have a drink. <laughs> so, <that> was, <laughs> um, so thank you very much for that keynote. Uh, if everyone, as we've said, would put the questions into the Q and A area, and we'll keep we'll have a whole uh, discussion panel at the very end after we've heard the other two presentations. So now I'm happy to present our, our next speaker. And, and Jenny from Poland is going to talk about libraries of the future, shaping community and inclusive cultural spaces. Uh, do, you, are you, do you have slides to share as well? Is she not here? Uh, yes, Varisa, uh, I think that she has a problem with connection. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, should we go on to the other session then and then hopefully she can join later? Okay, okay I will try to contact her. Yeah. Okay. So if that's okay, uh, we'll, we'll go with the session two first then and hopefully she'll be able to get back in. Uh, so this will be a, a session for two colleagues from Russia and they will be talking about volunteering activity as a professional tool in developing the international competences. Yeah, thank you so much. And do you want to share your screen then? Yeah, please. Okay, sure. Can you see my screen? Yeah, thank you so much. 
Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Elena Katina. I'm a PhD student of the Library Information Science Department of the St. Petersburg State University of Culture. My colleague is uh, Anfisa Shotaeva. She is a second year bachelor student of the LIS department. And we are so happy and thankful to join this webinar and share our experience in volunteering. We would like to start with the favorite quote of the president of the International Federation of Library Associations and Institutions, IFLA, Barbara Reason, that she said in one of her speeches, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Everybody realizes this quote in his own way. We understand it as an illustration of one of the main soft skills a teamwork. There is a common idea that uh, soft skills are inherent in every person to one degree or another, but we are convinced that it's necessary to look for ways to improve this and other soft skills for professional as well for personal development. That is why today we want to present an experience of the volunteering squad postman of goodness in the library information science department of the St. Petersburg State University of Culture, which is aimed to achieve this goal. The volunteer squad postman of goodness was initiated uh, in 2018 on the LIS department. The main goal of the squad is uh, to increase an interest in reading among children. The squad was born as the next stage of the students' The Day of Intellectual Donation project, which was later submitted to Russian Federation's Ministry of Culture 2070 Librarian of the Year competition. The IFLA guidelines for libraries serving hospitals, patients, and the elderly and disabled in long-term care facilities developed by the IFLA section of libraries serving disadvantaged persons served as the foundation for the development of the squad. The squad's activity develops according to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals the goal number three, good health and well-being, and the goal number four, quality education. A unique characteristic of their project is their work in the hospitals of the St. Petersburg. Volunteers pay special attention for emotional support and intellectual development during this difficult period for children. Nowadays, uh, the squad consists of more than 40 LIS students, volunteers. Since 2018, the Postman of Goodness uh, has held more than uh, 75 projects. Uh, during the pandemic, the squad moved to remote operation and uh, implemented online projects for children, such as master classes, lectures, uh, challenges, and other interesting projects through their libraries and uh, children hospitals. Well, um, my colleague Anfisa will uh, tell you more about our volunteering activity on the LIS department of the St. Petersburg State University of Culture. And we hope it could be an example of cooperation between libraries and LIS students as future librarians because uh, we think it can be seen as a good way for LIS students to get new contacts with the professional librarians, with the LIS uh, specialists, and uh, helps them to develop new useful skills. So, Anfisa, the floor is yours. Thank you. Well, our volunteer activity uh, not only increases interest in reading and bringing positive emotions for children, it also gives us an opportunity to improve our soft skills. Every event and project is a new step in our personal and professional growth. Of course, there are many useful soft skills, but now we would like to present the top five soft, sk soft skills which we got by volunteering in the squad. The first one is about the willingness to accept behavior and beliefs that are different from uh, our own. The second is about how to listen and to hear every person. Uh, 
The third one is about the ability to find the way from any unexpected situation. The fourth is about the segregation of duties, well-coordinated and united work. And the fifth is about the ability to attract attention and always keep in touch with the audience. Now, we are going to talk in detail about the projects that allowed us to develop develop I'm sorry uh, these five uh, as well as many other useful soft skills by volunteering in Russian libraries. One of the events that we organized was the children's play Kingdom of a Chitadir the fifth. Uh, there was a lot of work uh, we have done during the preparation of the performance and of course it required a demonstration of soft skills by every member of the squad. Together, we discussed the concept of the tale, wrote the script, created customs and props. After that, we have been realizing our plan for a long time. It requires well-coordinated and united work. Segregation of duties allowed us to concentrate on everybody's era of responsibility to get the best results. Probably this is the reason why our play was received so warmly. This project let us not only bring positive emotions to children, but gave us an opportunity to improve our soft skills. For example, we've been learning to listen to every member of the squad, pay the same attention to everyone's opinion and make the decisions that all of us would accept. Uh, we guess that everybody knows this feeling when you want to control everything and you think that you will do everything right, you know how to make it better, but we realized that an uh, approach like that uh, won't help us enrich our goals and make a great performance. That's why we learn to trust each other, support initiatives and ideas of every member of Postman Goodness. We also learn to solve the problems if they happen by constructive dialogue. Personally, we think that it's uh, one of the most important soft skills, but it's not the end of the list of soft skills that we practice on that day. We had to communicate to audience, quickly react on any uh, unexpected situations. It required flexible thinking, high level of mental intelligence, and ability to find a common language with every child. Another event uh, uh, is the marathon balance through time. Uh, it was time to International Volunteer Day, the 5th of December. Within the framework of the project, students told about the activities of Russian and foreign volunteer organizations. The project is based on results of Alon's research work for the competition about the tolerance in the Russian universities. We published 21 posts uh, about the activities of 25 volunteer organizations in Russian and the world. It was a good way for us to learn uh, an experience of other uh, of foreign countries in volunteering. Also, it's uh, a chance to adopt best practices for creating volunteer projects all over the world. The next project is the Masterclass Memory Prints in collaboration with the Children's Library named after Lemontov in the framework of the All Russian Festival Relay of Kindness 2021, timed to International Day of Persons with Disabilities. It was aimed to de develop the creativity of thinking in children and reveal their potential through drawing. This masterclass required working team, stress management, strategic thinking, and the public speaking sp skills. We also taken part in Volunteer Now Flash Mob, Time to International Volunteer Day, which was uh, initiated by UN Volunteer Program. Uh, in the framework of the Flash Mob, volunteers around the world use their social networks to tell the, uh, about their volunteering activities under the hashtag Volunteer Now and IVD2021. Majority of members of this uh, of squad, Postman of Goodness, have already told their inspiring stories about volunteering. This project allows us uh, allows volunteers from all over the world to show themselves, to share their experience and support each other. In our opinion, the flash mob is the best way to become a part of the international volunteer community in the online format. In conclusion, we can say that volunteer activity can be considered as training in the development of soft skills, which are necessary not only for volunteering, but also for formation uh, of a professional development, oh, I'm sorry, professional development trajectory in the future.
We can add that volunteering is like a soft skills camp for LIS students as future librarians in our country in particular and all over the, and all over the world in common. Thank you. Thanks, ladies. That was great. Um, I really uh, agree with the, uh, the soft skills uh, portion of it. And, and I think sometimes it's something that you can only develop with practice and time. You just have to go out and do it. And, and it, it comes to you that way sometimes. Um, so I guess we're still having connection problems uh, with Jenny. So we'll just go ahead now then to uh, some discussion. And one of the things that I don't think was originally planned for the program, but something that we talked about was that um, I could potentially talk a little bit about myself as uh, my experiences volunteering for libraries and library associations. And just because, like I said, I started when I was a student and obviously I'm still doing it. Um, and just, just kind of my own reflections on what volunteering in libraries has in library associations has been for me. So I'm, I'm happy to, to just chat about that for a few minutes. Uh, it, it was really um, my, so my first experience with my very first library association meeting was, like I said, they were drinking. <laughs> it was at a restaurant and they met for dinner and it was a local regional meeting of the local library association where I was at the time. And uh, I was just so, I remember being so impressed about how friendly everybody was and how happy they were to see me there as a student. I was in my first semester. I didn't know what was going on. And uh, I was encouraged to do it because one of my professors in the school was the president of our, our, at that time, our state library association where I was in school. And so he had some free tickets for dinner for students. And I was like, okay, great, free dinner. And I get to you know, go meet real librarians, be, it's be great. And I did, I had such a good time. And so it, that was a local, just a local regional dinner. And then that, then the following, you know, the following semester, I went to go to the State Library Association. So I was in Texas in the US states. And so we went and we shared like four of us went together and shared this hotel room four girls in one hotel room in the, a cheap hotel, not the conference hotel, because you can't afford that as a student, right? But you go into the, the, big, the cheap hotel across the road, wherever you can find something and walk back and forth. And uh, it, but it, it was incredible that I, at the time when I was a student, I was really interested in information literacy. And I went to uh, one of the committee meetings because they said, well, committee meetings are open to, anyone who wants to come and listen to the meeting. And so I went in and I left with a job. <laughs> it, was, it was sort of like, um, this is, well, this is really impressive that they're, you know, they've, give, they've put me onto a committee to help plan some programming. And then, so I had my first committee role. That was my second semester when I was in school. And locally at my university, I was the president or became the president of the, um, the Library Information Science Student Association that was in our department in our school at the time. And that meant that the way our schools worked in the States was that being president of our local association also meant that I was the student representative to the American Library Association. So I kept kind of working in, uh, especially the Texas Library Association for a number of years and continued to get different committee roles and do different things. And, and over time, eventually when I decided that I was going to do a PhD, I got involved in ACIST, which is the Association for Information Science and Technology. And that is open to anyone who works in library and information science. It's a lot of researchers, particularly that are involved and so when I was a PhD student, I went there and then I left as a committee chair at the time at the end of that conference was over where they, it was a small committee that was, did, that had people, but they didn't have any time to chair it and they'd already been chair. And they said, well, it's, it's small, but do you want to chair? And I was like, it was at a reception and I had a glass of wine and maybe that's why I agreed to say yes, because I was having this glass of wine and, and this 
professor who I really respected uh, was the one who asked me to do it. And so that was my, that was kind of my next association. And then I kind of went on from there and uh, did a lot of work in ACES for several years. So I, my first ACES meeting was 2002. And then in 2010, I, I did so much, I guess, working with them that I was asked to run for the board of directors. And I couldn't believe that I was even considered for that. And what they said was the nominations committee was looking for people who still had new ideas, but had already had some experience in the association. And I never imagined in a million years that I would win. I just never thought that I couldn't even believe I was on the ballot. And then I won. And then I spent three years on the board of directors and sort of things, I did a lot of work then related to my position as a member, a director at large for ACES during that time. And then uh, a couple of years later is when I moved, to, I moved to the UK, to Scotland in 2015. And at that time, my time on the board was over but then I was nominated to run for president of ACES. I didn't win that. Apparently the election was close, but I didn't win. But I never imagined again that I would ever be elected to even ask for, to even be nominated to run for president of ACES. It was just incredible. And uh, so I got involved more into obviously the European organizations. So I was the chair of the European chapter of ACES the, the first couple of years that I was here. And recently I've been more involved in SILIP, which is the uh, Library Association for UK and Ireland. And there's a lot of European representation on that as well. And so within SILIP, I'm currently uh, the chair of the Metadata and Discovery Group, which is my area <clears throat> of cataloging and metadata. So I'm chairing that. And I recently got, well, obviously I just recently got elected to this committee, to the uh, education and training section of IFLA. And I also was uh, elected recently to be a trustee, which is to be a board member of SILIP in Scotland specifically. In the, in U the UK, there's, they have the main SILIP and then the, de the devolved nations, including Scotland and Wales have their own groups. So starting in January, I'll be a, a trustee of SILIP Scotland. And I still, you know, so I've been doing this for 20 years and I can't tell you how much that has made a difference to my, my career, my own professional and personal development. When I first started in going to do my master's degree, I was terrified of public speaking. And now I do it all the time, obviously, and I don't even think about it anymore, but it didn't, it wasn't that way for me in the beginning. I was so quiet, I was so afraid to talk to people. Um, and I still realize that it's something that even now here I am saying 20 years later, you know, I've, I've done all this, had made it, you know, I've, what, I, what I believe to be a difference in my profession by now mentoring newer, younger professionals and teaching and uh, going on to uh, bigger roles and who knows what the next 20 years will bring for me. But I, I really feel like it's helped me make so many good friends. Um, going to conferences is hopefully one day soon we'll be back to going into conferences in person. I'm really looking forward to IFLA in Dublin next year. Uh, that the biggest thing that I would say is to, to get involved, to not just go to the conference and go out, go to meetings, talk to people, um, say hello to people during coffee breaks, um, see what's out there. If, because you don't, you don't get nearly as much from it if you just go to a session and then go back to your room. And I, you know, there's a lot of us who are introverts in this field. And it's very tempting to do that, but you, you get so much more out of it if you're actually active. So whether you're doing a presentation on what you're doing in your library, or if you join a committee or, um, you know, be some, do some part of the organizing for things, that's where the, the real value comes. And that's the kind of thing that you really, you can't substitute that for anything else, but it, it builds your confidence. It builds your your professional network helps you get jobs because you know more people that know, know where their jobs. And, and so all of those things can really make such a huge difference, uh, especially as you get started. And then if you're like me, you just never stop. <laughs> so um, I hope that is you know, helpful to kind of hear what can happen is if you start now as you're a student and you know, 20 years later, here I am doing things I still never imagined that I would have done or could have accomplished or 
how rewarding it is to know that I'm giving back to my profession um, with my own with my own work in terms of doing governance and administration, those kinds of things, but also um, helping students like yourselves to uh, to get involved and to stay involved and to maintain that. And so that's the, the biggest reward for me now is, is seeing what it can do for even my own students who go ahead and start volunteering uh, locally and how watching them now going out and chairing it local committees and, and being involved and so on. It makes me really happy to see that that they're getting the same rewards out of it that I got when I first got started. So that's kind of my story, it's a little random, but I just kind of wanted to share that. Yeah, very wonderful story. Thank you, Diane. I agree with you that uh, when we start volunteering, we cannot stop. It's, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I cannot imagine my life without uh, cooperating with new professionals and with my library association. Um, before we uh, say we present you um, next stories and uh, a little, we will discuss a little bit about it. Uh, we prepared uh, a questions to our participants. I hope that uh, they are still with us here. Uh, so um, I need to, I need Albina's help, uh, please uh, check the polling and you can see three questions, you should see. Yes, volunteering and uh, students, we are very curious, what is your experience? Do you have any experience with volunteering? A uh, second question is about uh, international volunteering. Have you ever cooperated with uh, librarians or readers from other countries? Uh, help organize conferences in another country. And the last question is about uh, your plan. Uh, do you what, would you like to co to cooperate with librarians from another countries? Uh, in library, international library associations or uh, just on new contact with other librarians. So uh, you have a few seconds for free answers and then uh, we will see uh, your answers, what your opinion as well. And we can talk more and we will know more about you. Okay. I think that questions are not so difficult. Um, so, uh, Albina, do you see any answers? Yes. Uh, right now, uh, only half of participants uh had a survey mm -hmm. so, so I, I think we can wait just maybe okay a few minutes. seconds okay so we can wait a few seconds and and then uh we can return to to the survey uh so okay maybe that's time for uh, stories from new professionals <laughs> Uh, so uh, uh, you uh, you know now you know my story how I started with volunteering with IFLA before IFLA I cooperate with um, with uh, librarians uh, from on the project International Librarians Network uh, and uh, I was a national coordinator in this project this project um compared uh, librarians in pairs and they could communicate it uh, via emails uh, and uh, share their experience so it was my first uh, experience uh, in uh, our in extra work in also in uh, communicating in english um, I need to say that uh, contact and cooperating with uh, my colleagues from other countries uh, in help me to improve my English and communication skills. Uh, I'm sure that you don't want to see how I talked a few years ago in English. Now it's better. 
uh, but uh, I met uh, very fantastic people here in IFLA and what I admire that they spent and uh, time uh, for work and uh, we learn new things. Uh, at this present today's presentation, uh, it was our first presentation in Pautan uh, in whiteboard animation, and we uh, uh, don't afraid of doing new things. Uh, so it's a really a nice uh, thing of this. And um, I work in advisory and training department in my library. And usually I uh, con communicate with my Polish librarians. I, co I organize uh, workshops. I write reports. So uh, my tasks in new professionals um, are quite different. We organize international meetings online um, Zoom meetings, workshops, and um, thanks to uh, new professionals, I learned how to use Zoom meetings. And it was very useful experience because when pandemic came, um, my library uh, couldn't organize any meetings in, in here in the building and we couldn't also meet librarians. So um, uh, organizing online meetings, uh, this skill was very useful in this time and my manager was very happy that I could do it. And we survived with librarians and uh, had a contact with them because it was very difficult time for all of us. Uh, so yeah, that's that's my uh, really good uh, input from from the new professionals. Uh, could I ask my colleagues about their experience? Who want to be first, Andres? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you can hear me? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, uh, thank you for being, uh, let me be in this wonderful team. I, I'm i volunteer in New Professional Special Interest Group since uh, I think five years approximately and enjoy every day this uh, wonderful group of uh, colleagues, friends, inspired people, and I, I'm, I want to tell you in this moment um, my personal experience with National Association. Uh, mm, uh, I think one of the main uh, things we must to remember the support of the uh, association is always essential. I must say I have an excellent uh, volunteer experience, um, and uh, I want to, to tell a little bit about that. Uh, I was recently graduate, and uh, since I I started working in a law library, I I volunteered for a uh, association of law libraries. Uh, my association of law libraries. Um, there, I began to collaborate in the first time in printed uh, in the printed publication in the in the magazine as a designer, and I remember one day I approached to the president, uh, a friend, uh, the president of the library association, uh, with the idea to make a digital uh, magazine, and I always remember the the what he said to me. It's like a, like a motto. He, he said, you say, you do it. You say it, you, you, you do it. So uh, he gave me the space, he gave me the, the tools, and he gave me um, most of all the confidence to do it. Um, uh, I've been, <laughs> I must to, to, I remember, I must to think how to do a digital uh, magazine. Well, uh, and I do it, and I do it for two years, more than two years. Uh, in two, two, in, uh, two years later, I became vice president of this associ association. So uh, I must tell, I, I invite to all the students, all the, all the new professionals to approach 
their associations, the professional associations, and tell about your interests and especially your desires to be part. Nothing more. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Andres. Uh, we are very proud that we have in our team a president of the Library Association. <laughs> Maria, what is your story? Mine? Yeah. Well, my story is uh, that I first became uh, a member of uh, Zagreb Library Association and immediately I, uh, they put me uh, to be a, a secretary of uh, association and I didn't know anything. I didn't know how to lead the meeting. I didn't know how to write the minutes. And uh, my first uh, minutes of the meeting were so long because I uh, tried to write, wrote down everything. And of course that was wrong, now I know that. And uh, so I, I really had a chance to work on uh, in editorial board of uh, our association. Uh, I have, I met a, a huge number of uh, cool librarians and uh, again, it helped me to spread uh, let's say my views on what I would like to do in librarianship. And uh, in the meantime, I have changed my job. I think that this good um, cooperation and good knowledge and new, and new skill, skills help me with get that new job. So I think that, again, I'm a winner of volunteering and learning stuff. Thank you. I think that um, thanks to volunteering and um, a chance to uh, do new things, you are more brave. Uh, I see it from myself that uh, I, I, I try again and new new things. Uh, I see that we can show the results of our survey because I'm very, we are very curious about our participants, uh, about their experience and uh, what they uh, think that they, what they want. Okay. Mm. Oh, yes, uh, there is. Um, okay, so uh, question number one about uh, experience with volunteering. 58% um, has experience. So that's, that's really great. Uh, 42, not yet. Uh, do you have any experience with international volunteering? 26% of our participants has, have, uh, has it. In, for most of them, it's a future, I think. And what about the second? Wow, it's <laughs> uh, nobody, um, everybody would like uh, to think about it. So 89% uh, yes, they want to uh, try corporate librarians and the uh, rest of them would like to think about it. So our tips could be that uh, we would like to invite you to, uh, to cooperate with new professionals because we are a place uh, where you can uh, see how it looks. You can also meet people from uh, other countries, uh, for, uh, from not only from IFLA, but other organizations. And if I can uh, advise you uh, what is important in our group, that uh, if you would like to join us, uh, please think uh, at first in which area you are good and also uh, what would you like to do uh, with us, how many hours uh, in during the week you can spend uh, for volunteering because we don't want to give you extra work. And uh, after that, you can contact us. We have many uh, tasks. You can write articles about your libraries, like about libraries in your country for our blog. You can also help us with organizing um, next IFLA Congress in Dublin, in Ireland. We, we started to preparing uh, and also uh, meet us, uh, join us to our Zoom meetings and, and talk. I'm sure that 
uh, that we will find something and uh, also we can learn from each other. Okay, so thank you very much for voting. Um, I yeah, uh, Magda, I think that Nicole has one question for all speakers. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, just a minute, just a second, Ganao. Um, for the speaker, so what three tips would you give to LIS students? So it's for everyone. Do you have something special you would like to share with them? Mm -hmm. mm. Um, maybe uh, I will say more that, uh, as I said, that it's very... I mentioned before that very important is to think how many uh, time we can spend on our extra work. Uh, so uh, first of all, think about it, that uh, how many time do you have during the week? And also what is uh, important for you? Uh, what would you like to learn? And also in which areas you are good at? And then uh, contact your library association or with uh, international groups and write to them and ask about uh, about uh, any cooperation. And also, uh, if you ever will be would be uh, on the IFLA Congress, uh, you can join to our uh, IFLA camp. It's a free conference. We also we always organize it before IFLA Congress, uh, and uh, you can uh, attend in our activities. And also, it's a chance to meet other librarians who help you, and it will be a good start for the IFLA Congress. You will know somebody, uh, some participants from the Congress. So it, it's 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 good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, my tips would be, uh, please try to volunteer on uh, IFLA World Library Information Congress. It's a, uh, it's a very, very special experience. And I know that all of us, we have a uh, remembrance of our first IFLA. My first was uh, IFLA in Poland, 2017. And it was really, uh, for me, it was a life-changing experience. So uh, my tip is try to volunteer on uh, IFLA Congress. Thank you. <laughs> I want to add something too. I'm not so experienced as another speakers today, so I have one tip. Um, I think that it's very important to choose right um, projects and events that you will participate because um, if you like it, uh, people who you're working with are gonna feel it too. And uh, in this way, you will uh, have fun and you will um, on the same wave. Uh, and it will, it's gonna be cool for everybody. But uh, if you will choose any project just for um, like to do something useful, something good, but you won't feel uh, satisfied by anything, uh, it won't bring pleasure to other people who you're working with. So that's uh, one of main things that I learned for this time when I'm, since I'm a volunteer. Thank you. I think that's a good advice um, to look for something that's, um, yeah, that's something for your heart too. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so Let's something, oh. yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry. Um, I, I guess uh, one thing that I would say is that it it kind of the uh, the spirit and the you know the heart that you that you put into it and the time that you dedicate to it uh, to to remember that it really is at the heart of our profession to to serve others um, whether it's paid or unpaid time and and that's what we do we're essentially a, to me a service profession. And so that's why I think volunteering goes along so well with what we do in our daily jobs. And it's just that, you know, we're, we're giving back to our own profession. So we're, we're looking after ourselves as well as uh, the populations that we serve in our libraries. And, and I think that's one thing to, to keep in mind that it will also enhance your professional work. If you are also uh, giving back to ourselves as a profession that makes us stronger 
it puts us in a better position uh, in the places where we need to be more present and um, it, it helps us all go back and do better things when we come together and help each other out and then go back out into the world and do all the great things that librarians do in their daily jobs too. So I think it, it all goes together and for me. Yeah. So any other tips? Well, I would have, um, I have an, another advice, um, which would be um, be active at conferences. And um, you should always do your research before the conference. So um, sometimes you can have a look at the list of participants, for example, and see if they are uh, involved in, in some projects you would be interested in. And then don't be too shy and just approach them because um, all our colleagues usually are very nice, very helpful, and they want to share their experience. So don't be shy, just try it. That would be my advice. <laughs> That reminds me of a story from when I was a student too, when I went to my first ACES conference, when I talked about ACES earlier, and I started to see these people who, uh, I, names I recognized because I had to read their papers and they were just names on papers or books at that point. And then I'm like, that's a real person. And then I thought, oh my gosh, that's the, can I really go talk to her? And I was terrified because uh, somebody that I, if you haven't read her, one of my favorite, LIS uh, academics is Marcia Bates and I love her work and she's been such inspiration to me in a lot of ways and I was like can I go talk to her and that's why I went to her and I was like hi I'm Diane I'm a student I just want you to know that one of your papers was like a major part of me developing my idea for my dissertation and she's like really somebody read that <laughs> like I practically have it memorized to me and uh, so people are just very flattered when you say them, you know, that you've admired their work or that you just want to say hello, that we are very welcoming. I've heard from academics in other fields that not other, other people are not as nice in other fields that, as we are, but we're friendly people, we're nice people and, and we're, we're all approachable. And I think that's something to keep in mind if you ever do get scared about participating or talking to somebody that you admire. That, they will probably be just, just as surprised as you are. <laughs> Thank you, great story. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yes, I have very a, interesting I have stories. Mm -hmm. Thank yes, you very I much. Uh, yeah, 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 please, Arvina. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Magda. Uh, no, no, I was thinking because we are talking about library uh, associations about IFLA and other international groups. And um, our presenters, uh, one of the speaker, uh, Jeannie, she has a problem with uh, the internet. I think um, all library helped her, <laughs> helps now, helps now, her now. But uh, I know Jeannie from the European project. Uh, she's a volunteer in public library uh, in Rory, it's in Poland, near my city, and she uh, comes from uh, Italy. And uh, this project, which allows her to come here, live uh, for a few months and, uh, and uh, work in library, is a European Solidarity Corps. And uh, this um, it's funded from UA uh, funds and uh, everybody uh, and between 18 and uh, 30 years old can apply uh, to this project and go to another country, uh, visit this country, work in the library and uh, got money for living there. And I heard and saw a project which uh, Jeannie uh, is uh, doing in the library. She organized English classes for the readers and have some classes with teenagers about, um, about arts, about poetry. And it is very good idea for our students. If you would like to visit another library, uh you can apply to this project uh yeah oh yeah i see that maria just uh shared the link uh, you can uh see it it's important that it's for it's for um citizens from the europe 
unfortunately not from the other countries, but uh, here in your if your country is in the UA can uh, apply and get and get funds for for the interesting trips. You can also apply if you would like to have an internship in the Navar Library. Uh, so uh, it helps you to uh, to get money for the travel uh, for living there. Yes, so not so many of these students attend. So after this webinar, I hope that it will be better. <laughs> yes, since we are approaching to the end of the webinar, I would like just to uh, tell you that uh, we launched the initiative where we ask LIS professionals uh, tell us uh, what uh, volunteering means to them. And uh, we uh, posted their uh, thoughts on our social media. So you're welcome to uh, look at this. And it's actually very interesting uh, views from different countries. Right now we have over 10, um, over 10 uh, uh, answers from over 10 uh, countries. Uh, actually from all regions uh, of uh, IFLA regions. And uh, so look at on our social media. And uh, also I would like just to tell you, to share our news uh, that um, just two days ago uh, at my university in St. Petersburg, we replicated this uh, experience from IFLA webinars series for LA students and we organized uh, the similar seminar, a webinar for LA students from all our, um, regions of Russia. And it's actually a very good experience. And I advise uh, uh, each country to tr try to replicate this experience so you can unite uh, your LA students within your country. And after that, uh, we are waiting for you to join our webinars. And uh, I uh, I give over to turn over to Diane so she can wrap up this webinar. Thank you. Thanks, Alvina. So I've shared uh, our links again if you want to take a look at our, our other events that we have and that we've done in the past, as well as our, our webpage, both for Division C, which is what this committee falls under, and you can see the education and training section directly with that link. So if you want to learn more about us and what we are planning and what we've done, as well as links to other things that you can that you can see that we've done as well. And uh, I'm excited to announce that our next webinar will be in March. So we're going to take a bit of a break for the holidays in the winter, but we will be back on the 23rd of March in 2022, if you can believe that, uh, on the impact of library advocacy. And this is a really important topic for a lot of reasons that we're looking forward to exploring. So do you start thinking about that. And if you uh, have any ideas or things that you would like to see as part of this webinar while we're planning uh, our speakers and what we'll be doing for it, would be much appreciated. Uh, so if there is nothing else from anyone, thank you for, for joining us today. And thanks to all of our wonderful speakers for sharing their stories and ideas and I hope it was inspirational for the students just as it was for me to hear from other people that share this, this same passion that I have. So thank you all again for coming and uh, we will hopefully see you at, if not before on our social media, uh, at our next webinar in March of 2022. So thank you all very much for coming. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you all. Bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.